my career came to an end because of an injury um, and luckily I had a, year, a season left um, at Leeds United on my contract um, which gave me the chance to, to coach um, and through coaching and helping out up at the academy they offered Leeds United offered me a job um, to manage the under 16s which is was my progression from uh, from stopping playing football people in the media will give footballers a lot of stick for the money they earn uh, but what I went through towards the end of my career that could have happened to somebody at 19 20 um, so the, the issues with people and, and players getting paid a lot of money you know the risks are quite high if you can if you have that injury at 19 then what do you do for the rest of your life um, so I, w I was fortunate it came late in my career um, I was fortunate Leeds looked after me the way they did um, you know the, the medical team up there Harvey Sharman fantastic the operation they provided for me uh, down in London was fantastic and the way they looked after me was you know it was top draw really me and James James Cooper were both at Sheffield Wednesday as youth team players he got released um, similar situation, didn't know what to do after football. He was 20, I think, at the time. Um, started a career in a state agency and when we were both 24, we decided to take the leap and open a shop. Um, but luckily, you know, that's my relationship through football with him and it's, it, it's worked for me. You know, I've invested in the company and been involved uh, to support James, but luckily I've had that on the side of of my football estate Yeah, well, we've got um, four ex-footballers who, who work within our, with our estate agency. So I, th I think, you know, football, it gives you a lot of skills. And, you know, we spoke about before, you know, most footballers who play to that level have got a, a high drive and they want to achieve. So um, the people involved in our company are doing really well. And, you know, they've got that football background and the confidence, you know, to deal with people. So that it's worked for us so far. My role, to, to be honest, is not hands-on day-to-day with the run of this. At, at, at this minute, I'm, I'm coaching at Huddersfield Town. Um, I'm, I'm currently doing my A licence in, in coaching. That's the route I want to take. Um, you know, I want to progress in my coaching. I still want to stay involved with football. Um, and luckily enough, I got offered the opportunity at Huddersfield to take the under-18. So I'm assistant uh, under-18s coach, which um, is a fantastic job for me at, at the position I'm in. The day I actually signed for Leeds United uh, was my dad's birthday, um, who brought all my family up, you know, lifelong Leeds fan. And, you know, that, that was a special day for me that I got to sign for the club I really wanted to play for, that I loved. And also my dad was part of that, um, which, you know, that was a special day. I'll, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget, um, you know, my first game that I played at Leeds. I'll, I'll never forget the promotion, which, you know, the day we, we got promotion to the championship, um, it was a special day, you know, for my career. A special day for my family being at Leeds, having a promotion under your belt. Um, so the, you know, there's little things like that, and you know, even even going back now, it's it's a nice feeling that I've played for the club. Um, I still go back and watch. I'd like you know my family to go back and having that, you know, sort of um, not respect from the fans, but you know, you did you did okay for the club and uh, quite a good time. I've got the experience of playing. I'd, li I'd like to um, progress with the coaching, and you know, I think because I have played, I've got I've got something to offer. But luckily enough, you know, I'd lost my job at Leeds with the new owner coming in in the summer. But luckily enough, uh, Mark Lillis offered me a job at Huddersfield, and um, you know, I'm really enjoying that role, um, learning every day, um, having to do qualifications alongside the role, but learning from all the coaches down there. You've got to have. You know aspirations, and you know I want, I would like to be a manager or a first team coach one day, um, and if that, I would be happy. You know, if it was at Leeds United, that's a club I probably saw myself being at. But um, you know, I'm enjoying my time at Huddersfield at the minute. Do you know who the shirt sponsor would be if uh, you got a manager? <laughs> We could, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Our, if we're, our estate agent's doing so well, yeah, maybe one day. In the days when gold shower taps were the norm at Thorpe Arch, Dominic Matteo brought his own brand of metal to the heart of the league's defence. Ah, the Premiership years. It only seems like a decade ago. Really, knowing me, it's just I take every day as it comes. I probably, in hindsight now, would have had things in place. Obviously, where we sat today, I've opened the bar. Um, 
did think he'd ever open a bar. It's kind of the old cliche, if a footballer finishes his career and opens a bar. But uh, I didn't really think that'd happen. I got the opportunity and did it. I'd love to have had more advice when my career finished of what I was going to do myself. I think, I think agents and management in football, when you finish your career as a footballer, should take more responsibility now for players because I think they kind of manage you throughout your career and don't worry about you too much after your career. I think football clubs and, and the PFA in general as well are a bit like that. It's kind of, it's all fine when you're playing football. You know, everyone wants to be your mates, the PFA, management teams, your football club. As soon as you finish, that phone stops ringing. You know, if you interview any footballer who's finished, I bet you, I bet you most of them, you know, will tell you the same story. And I just think that more should be done for the aftercare of footballers. A lot of fans out there might say, oh, you've earned fortunes, you don't deserve it. The aftercare, you know, we have to go to work every day at whatever time. But I think sometimes footballers can be very vulnerable to certain people in life. You know, look at Paul Gascoigne, talking to you earlier, prime example. There was one man who was going to go off the rails after football. Without football was Paul, you know. I think the aftercare for him should have been in place so much earlier. I didn't like get to say goodbye to any any of the, the the people that I worked with or the fans that I played you know played for like at Leeds and Liverpool where we were very close with even at Stoke at the end um, you know, I had a good relationship with the fans I never really got to say goodbye my injury kind of happened and then all of a sudden I was retired and packed in and no one really said nothing about it you know usually a player retires to get a chance to say thank you and you know maybe I'm not saying a lap of honour but maybe say thank you to the people who've paid your wages and looked after you throughout your career and supported you. I feel like I never got that opportunity because of the way mine happened, it happened so fast. Um, and that's the, one, the only regret I have is that I'd like to have said thank you more to, to the clubs that have, have looked out, you know, the, especially the fans, not the clubs, um, but the fans who've looked after me. Just the usual, isn't it? You're out and about, someone pulls you, do you fancy buying a bar? Me being daft, I said, yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I don't regret it, it's five years now. Um, we've had some good times here, we've had some bad times. It's, it's typical bar life in Leeds. I suppose if you speak to any bar owner in Leeds, they'll probably tell you the same thing. Um, like I say, we've just done a refurb recently. You have to keep up with the times. Everything costs money. You know, even because everyone thinks the bar's busy, you're making money, but then your outgoings can sometimes, you know, are more than what you're bringing in. So, it's, 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 you know, it's been a real learning curve this five years. Um, I've learned a lot of people I can't trust in this world. There's people I can trust. Um, I suppose it's a bit like football in a way business. It's like you know you learn your football you can trust on the field, and you learn you can't trust. So um, I think a lot I've learned a lot of life lessons in the last few years, and even through bars, um, maybe people like the lifestyle, the drinking, or whatever it might be a part of that. But I mean just in general, day to day. I think in the last six months, um, I've learned a lot about people that I thought I could trust, you know, and obviously people let you down in life. But like you say, I'm a strong character, and I move on. When I got to Leeds, I mean, with the youngsters that had come through and the group of players that we'd probably signed as well, and the ages were all that, it all kind of worked. Um, my only regret with that team is, and I've spoke to people like Rio Ferdinand and players who've left the club, you know, years later, that team never got to stay, stay together long enough. You know, the Champions League final team, you know, we played in the quarters and the semis, that team, if that had stayed together, I believe we'd have won something. And the real disappointing part for me was, because of the financial side, the team had to split up far too early and it really breaks my heart to this day because I knew when I was in that team we'd go to Old Trafford, Anfield, anywhere in Europe. We thought we were going to win those games you know and as a footballer it's really hard to find that. I've played for Liverpool at times and you know I had the same feeling at Anfield sometimes I thought teams are going to come here today it's a matter of how many we're going to beat them by you know it's that real air of confidence not cockiness just looking around your team looking around the coach on the way to a game and I'm going this is a right set of players here. I don't fear, I don't fear playing anyone. And I was so gutted that we got split up. You know, if you think of the players that we had, you know, some, you know, Ferdinand, Viduca, Decor, Batty, you know, just that's just a few, a few, just naming a few, Alan Smith, you know, all them types of players mixed in with a few hardworking professionals. You know, it, it, was, it was a real good mix of a squad. Um, I think the club, as a whole, we're mismanaged, we all know that. I think we bought too many players that we didn't need, you know, and we're talking great players on big money. I think the squad was good enough and I thought that maybe Peter himself, he was honest, he maybe bought two or three players that we probably didn't need at the time for the club to get any better. You know, I mean, if you look at that, we had, we had Robbie Fowler, Robbie Keane, people that sat on the bench, you know, it's, they were, at that time of their careers, they would have walked into any Premiership League, any Premiership team in the country and we've got them on the bench. So it, for me, it 
just I know, I know everyone says you've got to have three, four top strikers or three, four top defenders, but I think at the time when the money was tighter than what people thought, and we gambled on that Champions League spot, I think I don't think you can afford to gamble as a football club. You have to think about the future of the club going forward, not just bringing players in. Um, I mean, everyone says to me Milan away, obviously, when I scored that night because I didn't score many, but it, I think that all, always stand out for me. I may get hers in the back of my neck talking about it, but only because. Um, the connection with the fans that night after the pitch with a sing song. You know, in a stadium like the San Siro, you know, and 10,000 Leeds fans behind the goal. I mean, it's really hard to picture it, but I mean, it'd never happen again. I'd ne you'd never see a sing song with a group of Premiership footballers now with the fans in the stand. I don't think so anyway, but I just thought it really brought the city together that night. But other games that stand out, I think Mark Viduka's four goals against, against Liverpool, my old club, obviously. Mark, I thought, for me, was one of the best players I ever played with. I thought he had the lot. You know, everyone thought he was big and he was too big, but he was solid, great player. Um, I think team performance, I think probably the best team performance for me as well was going back to Anfield. For the first time as a footballer after I left, it was so strange. I, mean, I was there from nine year old and left at 26. So 17 years of my life was at Anfield. To go back there the first time was weird going into the away dressing room. Um, but I've never been so determined to win a game, I think, ever in my life. And that sounds weird, as he obviously an ex-Liverpool you know, fan playing against, you know, playing against his, his old club and the team he supported as a boy is really, really tough. But I remember Eddie Gray saying to me that this is the game you want to win. You don't want to come away from this stadium losing today. And I looked up to Eddie as like, you know, a father figure. And I remember we beat, I think it was 2-1 or 3-1 that day. And we really did give him a, a, you know, a good going over. And that was the start of the, you know, of that of, of the team developing. But like I said earlier, I'm so gutted that we didn't get three or four years to play together because I really think we would have improved all of us as a team.